Om Datum Optimum. A keystone in the Templars' ever-increasing power and wealth, but which ironically helped to bring about their suppression in 1307, was the Om Datum Optimum issued by Innocent II in 1139, granting exceptional rights to the Templars. Innocent II was the first pope elected after the conclusion of the investiture controversy, finalized with the Concordat of Worms in 1122, led by Cardinal Lamberto, who also coordinated the election of Calixtus II, the brother of Raymond of Burgundy, at Cluny in 1119. Cardinal Lamberto later succeeded Calixtus II as Honorius II, and confirmed the establishment of the Templars at the Council of Troyes in 1128. When Honorius died in 1130, a select group of cardinals elected Innocent II, precipitating a crisis that resulted from the election of Anacletus II as anti-pope, who was accused by his enemies of being secretly Jewish. Among Anacletus supporters were Duke William X of Aquitaine and Roger II of Sicily. Innocent II fled to France and gained the support of Bernard of Clairvaux, Peter the Venerable of Cluny, and the Emperor Lothar III. Anacletus II died in 1138, and the following year the schism was ended when Innocent II called the Second Lateran Council, at which he wrote Om Datum Optimum. According to Om Datum Optimum, Latin for every perfect gift, a quotation from the Epistle of James, the Templar rule was officially approved, and papal protection given. Additionally, the bull promised, as for the things that you will receive from the spoils, you can confidently put them to your own use, and we prohibit that you be coerced against your will to give anyone a portion of these. We establish that the house or temple, in which you have assembled for the praise and glory of God and the protection of his faithful, will be under the protection and the tutelage of the Holy See for all time to come. 9. The bull allowed the Templars to have their own priests and build their own churches and cemeteries, where they could bury their own dead as well as their confratra, and any traveler who died on their land. 10. Although various bishops resented the extent of the privileges and autonomy given to the Templars, successive popes continued to favor the order. In 1144 by Pope Celestine II's Milites Templi, which ordered the clergy to protect the Knights Templar and encouraged the faithful to contribute to their cause. It allowed the Templars to make their own collections once a year, even in areas under interdict. In 1145, Pope Eugene III's Militia Dei, consolidating the rights and privileges of the Templars, and granting them the honor of wearing the Red Cross on their white mantles. 11. Like the Om Datum Optimum, the Militia Dei granted the Templars the right to bury their dead in their own cemeteries. One example is a large cemetery found outside of Chateau Pellerin, also known as Atlet Castle and Pilgrim Castle, is a crusader fortress located near Atlet on the northern coast of Israel. There are many unusual features of the Atlet Cemetery that seem to contradict conventional thinking about European burial practices of the time. The number of burials is extremely large, and all of them can be dated to the Templars' presence in the area, between 1218 and 1291. British archaeologist C.N. Johns, who excavated the site in the 1930s, counted 1,700 graves, but Eve Glies of the University of Bordeaux puts the number at a minimum of 5,000, and perhaps as many as 8,000, which was far too many for just the castle or even local inhabitants. 12. 